Hello everyone, welcome back to FFG Live. Welcome back from our, uh, our winter break. Uh, we're here today with Max Brook, developer of X-Wing, and Matt Holland, community guru. Uh, community, I, I like guru, but yeah. community coordinator for organized play at least. I was, I was gonna go with Imperial Moth. but yeah, I'll take any of those. Imperial Moth, yeah. So <laughs> we're here today obviously to talk about the X-Wing points update for January. If you don't know, uh, twice annually, uh, so biannually, I suppose. Uh, they go, the devs go in and they review all the points and slots and whatnot for X-Wing and they, they tweak the meta to, uh, to, uh, to their liking. I'm so, always paranoid that I'm going to be confused biannually and semi-annually, so I avoid either. I think in this <laughs> case they mean the same thing. Um, <laughs> but yes, um, points. Yes, yes, points. So, A lot of changes. A lot of changes. Many yeah. changes. Uh, what? Uh, what? What? Uh, let's hit them with some of the big stuff before yeah. we, we'll get into faction specifics in a sec. But let's start right. talking kind of big, overarching, uh, overarching things. What are the uh, the what are the points of this points update? What are the points of this point ups update? What, I like what that. are the points of the points of the points update? So uh, I mean, I think we should probably just start with the big one, which is yeah. that the uh, blue squadron escort, the generic X wing with no yep. talent, is yep. now forty points. Which means... Which means you can have five of them. If my math is correct. Uh, yeah. And it is. And the uh, Cameron Giselle, it's a 39. Yes. So two options to run five X-Wings. Red five, standing by. Yeah. You can actually do <laughs> <Yeah>. it. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. I mean, we'd hinted at this in the um, December, in some of our December conversations, mm -hmm. but, um, you know, we are experimenting with changing points thresholds in a big way. Mm -hmm. um, we had a chance to run a pretty lengthy um, test that just consisted of, hey, what happens if we... Pull the points thresholds, and we did not pull the points thresholds on every ship. For instance, mm -hmm. the Blue Squadron pilot B Wing is still 41 points mm -hmm. because we experimented with that. We did try it both ways extensively, and we found that you know five B Wings on the table that is a, a lot, lot, of, lot of health. A lot of health. Yeah. <laughs> that is a lot of B Wings. But, but the but the X Wings are by no means the <clears throat> only ship that's oh, no. had its uh its kind of break point adjusted. Yeah. So there are there are a fair number of ships that have hit their break point, and you know we're not going to spoil all of them, but there are, there are some interesting changes. I um, expect to see very cheap tie aggressors. Yeah. Um, yeah. Do you want to throw out a couple? Uh, a couple of ships yeah, going. let's let's see. Um, uh, what went over a break point? Well, let's let's instead of focusing on break points, let's just focus on some of the big interesting kind of the overall changes. changes, like large ships dropping in points again, yes. trying yes. to get those more into the yep. meta. Mm -hmm. Yes, and also um, Scum sort of got a double bonus, so we'll see how this goes for them, but uh, mm -hmm. most of their titles dropped as well. Mm -hmm. So um, we want to try to incentivize, you know, that sort of iconic bounty hunter crew of like, ah, one Houndstooth and one, you know, Shadowcaster or something else, you mm -hmm. know, mm -hmm. these like interesting one-off ships. Yeah. So those titles got very cheap. The mm -hmm. other thing I noticed when going through the, the changes here is there's a okay, lot of blue. Yep. Give me one second. Okay. Waiting on sound. Will. They and will. And the squad builder will be updated too. You're back on. All right. Uh, so, uh, one, one, one of the things that I had noticed going through the list is a lot of blue from things points dropping, not a lot of red from things increasing. So, I think as you had said, mm -hmm. going to buff the things that are below the power curve right. rather than hitting all the top stuff. Yeah. I mean, a fair number of things went up. Very few things up went up dramatically. Sure. And uh, I, th I think it's primarily you mentioned like offensive force multipliers. Yes. Like going up. So yep. a good example is the Academy <clears throat> Pilot is dropping to 22 points. Um, but Hellrunner is going up to 46, and Iden Versio is going to 41. Mm -hmm. um, sure. So there are so there are a fair number of increases on those sort of powerful force multiplier characters. Yep. Captain Jonas is going up a bit, but mm -hmm. TIE Bombers are coming down. Um, uh, we sort of experimented that with Drea Renthal, and it seemed like Drea had landed in a really good place where people still play Drea, and mm -hmm. they do interesting stuff with her, but she's not quite as, you know, like, of a gimme as she used to be. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. And so those offensive force multipliers. Some of the defensive force multipliers we haven't adjusted up yet. Sarasu is not going up uh, very much, if at all, I think. Um, uh, which um, uh, we tested downside it. Downside to having seven factions. It's yeah, it's a lot. To, okay, Cirrus is going up a little bit, but Cirrus is not going up much. Um, and you know, one of the things we found is just that like it's potent, but the offensive force multiplier is better. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, I mean, red dice have always been better than green dice. Yeah. So 
increasing them is a little bit more effective. And then a lot of drops on talents and yes. force powers, yeah. things like that, especially the ones that you don't see. Pretty much, pretty much every force power except for hate went down. Right? Yeah. yeah, and for talents. So one of the interesting things is um, with talents, uh, a lot of people in the community have talked about like, should Crackshot go to two? And I actually think that's a valid question. Uh, we're not doing that now, mm -hmm. but it's an interesting question that might change future valuations and we're probably gonna experiment with. Um, mm -hmm. So Crackshot is staying where it is for the moment, but um, a number of other things are dropping to try yeah. to make them competitive. Yes. You mentioned, uh, or have, have we talked about cannons yet? What's going on with cannons? We haven't talked about cannons yet. No. Cannons are going up a little bit. Yes. Um, cannons are going up a little bit because in a lot of cases, the bodies you can get on the table that can carry them, that can carry them are going down. Yeah. And R2 Astromech, the it's, thing that yes. we saw very prevalently at Worlds, yep. increased in cost increased in points uh, yep. for uh, most cases. Archer Astromech is ticking up a bit um, uh, for most uses. Um, there might technically be one or two places you can put it where it wouldn't go up, but it mostly did. Uh, R2-D2 going up a little bit as well. Mm -hmm. um, uh, you know, a couple of... Uh, uh, one good one let's talk about is the most popular pilot in the game. Where's that Republic? Wat Tambor. Wat Tambor <laughs> is staying the same. Uh, um, but, but... I, I forget the fact. You forget the fact. I forget the fact. It, it was a, what it, are you doing? It was a stats fact. It's uh, <laughs> so, someone else is going down. Someone attached to Wat Tambor. Oh, okay. Uh, yes. Uh, well, let's talk about so uh, the um, Captain Sear is going up a bit. That's right. Yep. Um, yes. So uh, so Wat is uh, is not uh, increasing, and so maybe we'll see some interesting things with Wat. Wat was the more popular of the two in a lot of the initial testing we saw, and even in the early days in the wider community. Yeah. Yeah. Captain Sear took a little while to catch on. So now that Captain Sear is going to be forty five, maybe people will try out Wat. Yeah. Um, but a good example of that is we're not trying to scorch. Earth on the Seer Swarm build. You can mm -hmm. still play it. Mm -hmm. in, in general, most of those popular so popular builds have been not necessarily untouched, but haven't been just hammered into the ground. Right. Because again, keeping that theme of trying to bring everything up to their level. Yeah, it's increasing the competitor's viability rather than knocking those guys down. So like a good example, most popular pilot in the game, not Wat Tambor, Obi-Wan Kenobi, uh, is going up a point. Mm -hmm. um, uh, he, we feel he's in a reasonably good place. You know, at Worlds, Obi-Wan was not all over the top sure. of the board. He was chosen frequently and performed well, but he, you know, wasn't runaway, oppressive, you know, way above the power curve. Mm -hmm. And so he's going up a little, and the Jedi Knight is coming down a little because we think that they're a little underplayed. Um, Barriss is also getting pretty cheap at 38. Um, but, uh, but we're not pushing Obi-Wan up through the ceiling because mm -hmm. I don't think we need to or should. And with generics coming down, it probably isn't as necessary because Obi-Wan is weaker if you've got those yep. more fire arcs you can get on him. Mm -hmm. yep. And that, that's pretty much the Galactic Republic. Like if we want to go through factions, start yeah. with them, that we're on them. Some tweaks to the Jedi, a couple things dropping, especially some of the lesser played pilots and some of the other ships. Yep. But not a lot else changing on just the Republic side of things. Yeah, mm -hmm. no, the Republic is pretty, pretty similar here. I mean, we're getting... Oddball got a discount across the board. Everyone should be pleased to know. Um, uh, but uh, yeah, mostly these are you know blue numbers. The Naboo Handmaiden down to 42. The Bravo Flight Officer to 33. So some of the things that we haven't seen much. Um, uh, Trying to make them a little bit more attractive so that they do show up. Exactly. Killing, you know, if you have a favorite build, you can still, in many cases, fly that or maybe make some minor changes and still fly it. Exactly. Somebody asked about Epic. Yeah. Let's touch on that Yeah, Because really we do, do have Epic points up. Let's we... wait on that until we go through the factions. We will get to Epic. All right, let's put a let's pin just, on Let's just have a, a, a nice, spoilers. organized... Uh, organized spoilers. Uh, spoilers. All right, well, let's go to the Separatists then. Yeah. So, talking about the Separatists. <laughs> um, so, uh, yeah, it happens here is going up a bit. Um, the uh, Hyena Bomber is coming down a bit. Um, uh, it's had good performance lately, um, so it'll be interesting to see what that does. But it's um, it's not dropping drastically, but a little bit, just because... Because of interest to people, the Nantexes are not changing, although Ensnare has gone up a little. Just a tiny bit, so that you can't run four of, the, uh, four of them with Ensnare. Yep. Um, uh, but yeah, the Nantex, um, again, in testing, it seems to be in a good place, with generics going down. It's less powerful anyway because it's vulnerable to those multiple firing arcs. Sure. And um, some of the hyperspace things are also pertinent to it. The Sith Infiltrator is probably More the most spoilers. interesting thing. <laughs> yeah, talk to me um, about Sith Infiltrator. So Darth Maul coming back to 65, which is, I believe, where he started, interestingly. Um, although maybe maybe that was the last stage of internal testing. He jumped up at the end. The two are blurred in my mind now. But yeah. he's, he's hovered around that mark. He's coming down a little. We want to see what that does to him. 066 is also coming down a little bit. 
Um, because 066 has calculate, which is worse than focus, uh, 066 I actually feel is about the same value as the dark courier. So 066 is picking up a talent slot and it's going to 51 points. Um, and this is part of a case where the threshold didn't change because we definitely felt like four dark couriers was a lot and that wouldn't be much That's fun to play against. Um, but, uh, you know, 066 doesn't really need to cost more than the generic. Sure. Again, because of that calculate focus trade off. Um, and because you have to pay points to really get great use out of 066's ability. Sure. Uh, so, yeah, ensnare is going up marginally. Um, so then on the Rebels side, so we, we talked about 5X Wings already. Yeah. Are there other kind of big changes for the Rebels? Well, a lot of the mid, uh, a lot of things are coming down. Um, mid tier pilots, especially the things that. Nobody was really flying as much. Exactly. <laughs> um, the Hawk is coming down a bit, um, so we'll see if they have a return to prominence. The Hawk was did quite well at the start of the game, and then we increased Moldy Crow quite a bit, and it dropped down. So we're bringing the Hawk down some more. Um, uh, Fen Rao is dropping to 50, so that should be interesting. He hasn't shown up much, despite being really popular in first edition and yes. being basically the same. Um, uh, but yeah, so like Colby Sperato and Jack Porkins and Lee Van Tenza and Edrio Tutubes, you know, if those are if those are your X-wing pilots. My boy, Edrio Tutubes. Edrio Tutubes, yeah. You're, you're in after, luck. After Watt more. <laughs> um, oh yeah, and then another thing is that these points updates will include the points for the new content. So I yeah. was looking through here From and the card packs, the card and packs. Wave Six. Yes. Yeah. And so one of the most important things here that I, I hit is. Right on that list, I was looking down. It's like, what's in, what's this entry in blue? Oh, that, right, that's K2SO. A particular uh, U-wing pilot people have been asking for for a long time. Yeah, so K2 has a points value. You and you'll what's, find what's, out what it is. What's his points value? Oh, I don't want to spoil oh, everything. Oh, come on. <laughs> I, all right, he's everything. 46. Yeah, 46. You've also got Callus and the Ghost, and then Leia flying the YT-1300 too. Yes. So a lot of you know characters that just hadn't been in those ships in the, in the past now added in, which is pretty cool. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, uh, and then, of course, we've got stabilized S-foils at two points. For the B-wings. For the B-wings. Yeah. Oh, and then there's a K-2 crew as well. Um, All right, so Empire. So for Empire, where did I put them? Oh, I, have, I have scum and villain. You scum. Yep. Uh, We're really good at this. The bottom here, then. Yeah. Galactic Empire. There's a lot of paper. There they are. Uh, so TIE Fighters? Yeah. So TIE Fighters have dropped mostly, except for Aiden and Howrunner have gone up. And the Inferno Squad folks actually stayed where they are. Yeah. They're performing really well. Um, so we kept them where they are. Um, but the cheaper ones, and Valen Rudor, and Night Beast, yep. those ever popular choices. You've also seen <laughs> the low end TIE Defenders, low end TIE Phantoms, TIE Bombers, those have all dropped, whereas Jonas, as you said earlier, did go up because of his force multiplier kind of effects. Uh, and then same thing. Strikers low end have dropped, and they get a new pilot as well. Yeah, Vagabond, so that's going to be fun at 35. Yep. And Decimator-wise, you've only dropped the Patrol Leader, yes. and then added uh, Morna Key, who I think we spoiled pretty recently. Decimator seems to be in a really good place, and especially yeah. with Morna Key coming in, I think the Decimator's going to be very strong. Again, especially if Swarms become more relevant, Reinforce is amazing, Morna Key has a really good Reinforce ability. She's going to be a potent addition to a lot of lists. Uh, Star Wings untouched, Pearl yep. Jendon, again, going up a little bit, and across the TIE Advance, the Interceptor, the Reaper, and the Aggressor drops on all the low pilots. Yeah. So Aggressors just in general all going down. The cheapest Aggressor now at 26 points. Yeah, That's... and the cheapest Interceptor, the Alpha Squadron pilot, at 31. Yeah, so wow. a lot of room to build there and, and you know try some of these lower initiative yeah. pilots. And that's, you know, when we break down why, especially for the Interceptor, they can go that low. Although we tested them lower and they were a nightmare for a minute. <laughs> um, uh, but uh, why they can go that low, uh, you know, the, the power of auto thrusters is much lower on a low initiative uh, pilot. So, you yep. know, a lot of the factors, they don't have a lot of health. Yeah, they've got good agility, but, you know. And good guns, but. And good guns, but, you know, if they can't use the reposition quite as, you know, like effectively, you know, they're they're going to need to play every different game. The lower initiative interceptors have always been kind of a glass cannon. I mean, you would see them flown in a TIE swarm as that three die ship, but they're not any harder to kill than a TIE fighter. And speaking of epic, since we can dip into epic points because it's relevant here, mm -hmm. um, the, well, not epic points per se, but the but in epic, in the putting six side. putting six of those on the table for sure. you know, not that many points, That's or five of them with Soontir or yeah. Yeah. Turfanir, if you really yeah. want. 
um, is probably a really good choice because that's a lot of attack dice on the table for not that much. <laughs> you just hope your enemy doesn't bring bombs. Indeed. Here's a, some scum and villainy. Yeah, so let's scum. talk scum and villainy. So scum and villainy, um, I mean, scum and villainy is an interesting place because you know a lot of people in the community have been concerned about them. Their performance at Worlds, however, was really good. Um, but we definitely feel like the large scum ships and the medium scum ships have been lagging a bit. So we touched mm -hmm. on the point, the point values for all the titles. Those have dropped. Yep. Mm -hmm. The IGs are down across the board. I so think we're excited about that. Triple IG is going to be a thing. We're going to see how that goes, but it's going to be exciting. Wow. Um, uh, Fang Fighters, uh, for the same, much the same reason as the TIE Interceptors, Fang Fighters are getting cheaper, although not as much cheaper because they're not as they can be more of a jouster. And mostly the low end ones. Yes, again. yes, we're not touching Fenraz points. He's he's great. <laughs> um, and again, the low end Bounty Hunter coming down to sixty two in the Fire Spray. Um, uh, let's see. Uh, the G1A is staying as is, but its title is getting very, very cheap. Nice. Um, uh, we we, uh, we experimented with five Gan Feinsman, and for similar reasons to the B-Wing, we found that it a lot was of health, a lot of, a lot of health. It's not very much fun to play against in a way that five X-Wings is a much more in entertaining exercise for the opponent. Sure. Um, uh, the Spice Runner down to 30. So okay. that should be interesting. Um, and then a lot of lot of uh, drop points. There's the a masters. lot of blue on the jump master. So yeah, <laughs> so uh, the jump master is coming down quite a bit, um, and it is picking up a cannon slot. Okay. So you know, one of the things we found is the jump master not having any sort of like dedicated front guns has been a real weakness for it. We have a fair number of cannons in the game now that do interesting things. If that gives the jump master this role as sort of a debuff. And this kind of somebody was you know worried about the increase to cannons pricing, but yep. keep in mind since the cannon carriers have all dropped, yep. your your effective cost to field these cannons hasn't changed, or has gone down in some or, cases, or has gone down in some cases. Uh, it's just a matter of balancing. If we drop the ship cost and didn't drop the cannons, then yep, power yep. levels get out of whack. Exactly. And then Nom Lum. A lot of people have wondered, would Nom Lum be cheaper than the contracted scout? And the answer is yes. Nom Lum is 38 points. This is one of the new pilots from the card pack. Yes, yes. And uh, brief uh, Edge of the Empire cameo character for those who <laughs> read No Disintegrations. It's true. <laughs> um, uh, the M3A, uh, the Cartel Spacer is at 25, and they're all getting cheaper except for Sarasu, who's going up a little bit. Um, uh, the Mining Guild High down to 22. The Mining Guild High seems to basically be able to be pegged at the Academy Pilot yep. and be in a good Makes place. Sense. It's got some interesting trade offs. It's got a worse style. Brooks did a great job on that ship. It's in an interesting, good place. Uh, the Quad Jumper is coming down um, uh, with the various tractor changes it really needed to. Um, uh, but we're hopeful that the quad jumper Can will... we touch on the tractor changes? There? Yeah, let's spoil just talk about... Yeah, let's spoil the tractor FAQ changs. There's a new yes. rules reference going up. Yeah, yes. the new rules reference goes up as well. So the tractor change is not the spending the tokens thing. We experimented a little bit with that, and it's an interesting idea. Um, uh, we had thought of it too. Um, but the downside is it makes self-tractor interestingly difficult to balance. Um, and especially with the Nantex, we're actually concerned that that might make it better. Because if it got to sure. do its action and then remove that tractor token to move, that's you know that's very potent. Um, so uh, instead, we're going with a different route that adds a choice point for the opponent. Because the fundamental problem we were finding was the tractor makes it feel like one player has no agency. So we're sure. adding back in agency for the other player in a very direct way. So after your opponent tractors your ship, you can't do this on self-tractor. You can have your ship gain a stress token, to rotate 90 degrees. Okay. Interesting. That's that, cool. That makes the choice of you know where to tractor and and if to tractor yes quite a bit harder because and it's only the after option. they move you. Yeah. So you can if you want to just reduce their agility. Sometimes you might actually say you know what I don't want to risk giving you that 90 degree spin. Um, yeah. It's better to just have you at lower agility where I know I've got you, but then they probably can't throw you out of arc. Or they're like, okay, I'm going to throw you so that you probably are out of arc, or you have to shoot through a gas cloud or something awful like that. Sure. But you still get to say, well, where do I want to be next turn? And maybe you get to get a shot that you wouldn't have had. Yeah, that's interesting. Could you just clarify who gets it's to change change. the rotation direction? Yes, the uh, the player who, uh, who controls the ship gets to do the yeah. rotation direction, obviously, because otherwise it would be infinitely <laughs> worse for them. <laughs> um, Rebel rolled me and then also turned me yes, exactly. facing off the board. So, um, so yeah. Uh, uh, so that's, it's, uh, we spent a fair amount of time testing it. It seems to work pretty well. You definitely don't always do it. Sure. Like I was 
I mean, the first thing we did was we threw down a game with Sunfac and a bunch of Nantex about, against a bunch of things that would be very vulnerable to that. I, um, and I played against Frank, so I still lost. Um, but uh, it was a good game, and I did use it a couple times, get a couple shots. I killed a Nantex I wouldn't have because of it. Um, and, uh, but there were also times where I didn't do it because I just didn't want the stress. And it was like, you know, this ship has a low quality shot anyway. Yeah. It's fine. I'll just, I'll, I'll deal with it next round. Sure, sure. Um, yes or no? Are you just trying to get more spinning into the game because it's such a good trick? <laughs> it is a good trick. <laughs> uh, okay, so sequel era. Yeah, uh, so Let's, let's hop to the resistance. I got first order. Oh, all right, let's do first so, order. They are first. After they're getting all. a new ship. Yeah, yeah, they are. Major Vondrix tie. Yep. Yeah. Comes in, what, 57 for Vondrix and 45 for the low end first order provocateur. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And everybody else is in between there. Really a nice mid-cost interceptor for First Order that they did not have, since they really only had the silencer on the very, very high end. Yep. Uh, tie FOs down across the board. I don't see a single exception. Nope, they're all down. But they don't have one of those offensive force multipliers. And sure. that's intentional. We want the, t the First Order TIE Swarm to feel like... Well, it's intentional that they don't have one in the TIE Foe. Sure. They may eventually get them elsewhere, but we'll get into that more <laughs> later. <laughs> Uh, and you've got the lowest one now, the Epsilon Squadron Cadet, coming in at 25. Yep. Uh, silencers get dropped again in that middle sort of rank where you know, we're not seeing them used quite as much. And same thing with the Epsilons, too. Yeah, Epsilons, several, uh, several blue things on there. Um, and then, of course, uh, the resistance starts with the uh, fireball. Um, and the resist the fireball is interesting just because it is it really kind of is two ships. Sure. Because there's... There's Kaz and there's everybody else. Um, and uh, so Kaz comes in at 40 points, which is still a steal for it's such a powerful ability. Right. But he's also on a chassis that's almost a Z95. He dies a lot. That is actively blowing itself yeah, up. Yeah, that is actively blowing itself up if you're using its <laughs> abilities. Um, uh, and also it has a lot of upgrade slots. So you are sort of incentivized yes. to be spending points in there, but then you're putting more points into something that's probably going to blow up. So... Um, it's it's an it's a really interesting trade off, but Kaz is is quite potent at forty. But at initiative four, he gets outflown by a lot of people. So he's in this interesting space of you know like he's great against high initiative, but you have to get those shots. Yeah. Um, uh, and then the Colossus Station mechanic is in at twenty six. Um, it's it's a reasonably strong choice, but more importantly, it's kind of in a niche that the resistance hasn't really had sure. that like low end you know ship the you can Z95 fill in with type. yeah i mean they have the transport pod which is comparably priced um but the pod is very strange and it's more of a you know like it, it's kind of an oddball that plays in a more like non-traditional way and doesn't mm -hmm. necessarily feel like that z95 etc yep. blockery ship you can use it that way but it's not you know, quite as... Yeah, it's not quite the same thing. Not quite the same. And especially having Slam on that blockery ship is really good. Yes. Um, the Star Fortress is coming down quite a bit in price. Um, Starts at 52 points now, I see. Yeah, the Cobalt Squadron Bomber at 52, um, with uh, Paige and Finch and Eden all at 60. Nice. And um, Paige is a new, another new pilot out of that card pack coming. And Paige is the only one who has a talent slot. Okay. So, some new stuff to play with there. I think also Trajectory Simulator has dropped. It is, yes. Kind of a, a help to those ships, too. Yeah, so it's going to be interesting, because on the one hand, we've given Swarms a lot of tools to work with, and we haven't nerfed much in this update, and we haven't nerfed the powerful Swarm list. On the other hand, with Trajectory Simulator and some bombers coming down, you know, Swarm, it's going to be anyone's game for that. So we think that'll be a really interesting dynamic shift. Um... <laughs> Uh, the RZ-2 A-Wing is staying in a similar place to where it's been. But getting two new pilots. Getting two new pilots, ZZ Talo at 40 and Ronith Blario at 34. Um, uh, and then the Scavenge YT-1300 is getting really cheap. Hmm. Um, so the Scavenge YT-1300 has been a really interesting ship over the life of the game in general. Uh, but we wanted to make it more differentiated from the original YT-1300 in 2nd edition. Um, and that meant playing up the scavenged nature of it, which means it's worse in a lot of ways. Um, so, uh, you know, Ray starts at 70, and that's, you know, for two force points and a good initiative and force power, which is kind of the only way the resistance gets to play in that pool, hmm. for the moment at least. Yeah, yeah. Huh. For the T-70s, um, general points reductions on the mid and low pilots, you won't be able to have five T-70s, though, obviously. Um, 
Uh, and then... I have a lot of people are asking about Dash Rendar. He has dropped in points. Yes, yes he has. He's yeah. dropped considerably. You so, want to tell him what Dash so now, that, so now that we're through the factions, let's, before we get to the epic points, let's take a few requests from the chat as to specific things they want to know about. Sure. So I did, I've seen a ton want. of Dash Rendar. Dash uh, Rendar. Give it to him. 91 points. So Dash is getting a lot cheaper. It's going to be interesting. E wings, that's another thing people yep. want to know. E wings. Uh, e wings so, are near so near my heart. I, I, yeah. hit, hit Vader and Sunter as well if you want to look for Vader uh, and Sunter. Vader and Sunter aren't changing. Corin and uh, Gavin Darklighter don't change, but the Rogue Squadron Escort and the Knave Squadron, they dropped to 53 and 50 points on the E wings. So, again, continuing that trend of dropping the generics or dropping those lower end pilots that people aren't flying as much. Yep. And that is, that is the trend. So, yeah, you can fly four E wings now if you want. Yep. Guri stays same price. Yeah. Again, we didn't push a lot of things up. Mostly, we were looking at the force multipliers and then a few pilots that we found to be overrepresented. Sure. Um, some of whom were force multipliers anyway, like Captain Seer. Yep. Uh, Wedge Antilles. I'm pretty sure he's staying the same. Wedge Antilles is untouched. All the higher end Luke, Wedge, Biggs, Thane, Garvin, no change on points for any of those guys. Uh, Ozatuck. Uh, the Azatuck generic. Just the defender drops down. Uh, yeah, I believe 44 the defender points. to 44. Yeah. And we'll just do a couple more. Aggressors here. drop across the board. Star Vipers. Star Vipers, the only change is the Black Sun Enforcer down to 45. So. And let's see. A lot of upgrade there. changes. A lot of, like we said, talents, force abilities. R2 Ashramac. Fifth brother crew. Ah, the fifth brother. No, no. Well, uh, yeah, crew or pilot. We can talk about. Well, let's talk about oh, both. Crew dropped. Both. Eleven, Kruger, uh, 11 points. I think so. My memory is yeah. I'd, I'd have to check good. that. Where's Empire? There's a lot of numbers. Fifth. Oh, fifth brother is up to eleven. Yes, up to eleven. And up then 11. his pilot is at... forty-two points. So he dropped to forty. Well, he didn't drop. He's new. He's new. At forty-two. Uh, defenders. Uh, the generic. Uh, the low end generic is at sixty-seven. Um, so you cannot have three defenders. I did spoil that in the last update. You're mm -hmm. not getting three defenders yet. We'll see if this, you know, seismic shift really changes the overall economy. Maybe three defenders is back on the table someday. All right, let's do like one or two more. Trajectory uh, simulators down to six points. Okay. Uh, I see proton torpedoes. No change, I believe. All right. Uh, oh, and people asking about the ghost. The VCX. Uh, the VCX 100. That dropped. Yeah, those got some Pretty much decent little board, point right? breaks. Large ships in general got yeah. decent little point breaks. It goes from 80 at Kanan and 67 at the low fall rebel. Everybody else is in between there. Nice. So point drops across the board. Plus they pick up Agent Callus, or I should say Alexander Callus in his yes. rebel form. Yes. yes, he's no longer an agent. It's him. He's the traitor. Uh, oh, last last one, Boba Fett. Uh, Boba Fett. Uh, Boba Fett might be down a teeny bit. Where we get scum and villainy? <laughs> Too many papers. <laughs> Fire spray. Oh. Boba Fett is untouched. He is at 85 still. Boba 85. Fett's performance has been really good, and when we were testing the lower generics, he was performing great against them. So, yeah. you know, Boba is in a strong place. All right, let's talk about some epic points. Yeah. And don't worry if we didn't call it yours specifically. They're all going up after the stream. They'll, yeah, they'll You'll all be, able to be pour over them to your heart's content. <laughs> so, you know, we saw people were worried that there wouldn't be points updates to epic and huge ships, and there absolutely will be. Yes. There's not a ton of updates for huge ships for the moment because. We don't have as much data as we do. Like, we just had a Worlds with yeah. tons of games played, you know, several hundred players coming out and competing. And we have, we have that over a year's worth of data to look at in trend, too, right? Yes. For, you know, big seismic changes. But there are some. Uh, the Raider is dropping to 146. Um, you know, when we were doing our internal testing, we felt the Raider was a little stronger than the Corvette. But, uh, you know, as I've seen it out in the wild, the Corvette really performs. Those range four guns are, sure. guns and locks are really big. Um, it really it powers those turbo laser builds. Um, so the, Cor uh, the Raider is dropping to 146, um, same as the CR90. Um, in terms of the upgrades, um, all of the hard points are getting cheaper. Um, Encouraging people to try those out. Yes, mm -hmm. exactly. So um, ion can battery to five, targeting battery laser, uh, targeting battery turret to six, even turbo lasers down to thirteen. And then dreadnought hunter gets a nerf to two. Yes, Not a yes, nerf, a significant, nerf, uh, buff. A significant buff. Um, yeah, dreadnought hunter down to six, I think. Yeah, six. Um, so, uh, so yeah, so that's uh, that's basically the full list there. There's some other. 
little things. And there'll be yeah, more changes to hyper to excuse me to Epic as you know time progresses and you know, we get more data. Yep. See more trends. But it's yep. undoubtedly like a format that you're interested in actively supporting and interested. very much so. Yeah. yeah. Yep. Awesome. Well, uh, I right. see a lot of people asking for it, and it's next on the and schedule almost, uh, as well. I almost almost said it there anyway. Uh, what's up with hyperspace now? Tell 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 me about what's happening. Yeah, so a lot what, of things different. What is the new hyperspace pool like? I was going to say most of the red in these documents is what's not in hyperspace because the pool is really different. Mm. Um, so, uh, I mean. Where do we want to start? Well, a quick reminder, Hyperspace for 2020 yes. is going to be your system open series. It's going yep. to be your first round of store championships, and then the second round of store championships, it's optional. The store can choose to do Hyperspace or Extended. Yep. So there's going to be a place that you're going to be playing these, You know, even if you're a higher level competitive player, if you're attending any of these events. Uh, because those store championships you know, have the opportunity or, or will be Hyperspace, we've really tried to focus on making it friendly for the new players. Yep. So. And it's much smaller. Yes, so player. the way Hyperspace, let's go over the way it's gonna work first, it's less, of a, it's less of a blacklist, like these are out of Hyperspace, yeah. and more of a whitelist, like these are the ones that get into Hyperspace. Exactly. Yes. So um, so it's a curated format. We really wanna deliver this interesting experience that's very different from Extended. It shouldn't feel the same as Extended. It should feel like its own fun thing. Um, so to that effect, the way it's gonna work um, is at the beginning of each sort of hyperspace season, of which we'll be doing two a year. And this is the, the first. This is the first. Yep. Um, uh, we'll pick what's in. Um, and that will be some number of pilots and upgrades. Um, generally speaking, there will be many ships for which all or most pilots are in, but there will be some, there will be times where individual pilots will be left out of a ship or maybe even, I don't think we have any here, but there might even be times in the future where like one or two pilots for uh, a given yeah, ship are in, sure. and that's your only choice for yeah, that ship. I didn't ship. see that for this, uh, this particular up update. I imagine that'll happen in the future though. Um, and so, you know, it's very much this like curated format that we think is gonna be interesting and is weighed against what's going to be coming in because most of the new content, pretty much all of newly released new ships rather than re-released old ships are going to drop directly into hyperspace. Mm -hmm. Basically, unless stated otherwise, yep. any new ship or upgrade. Second, wave, second edition only ships or yep. upgrades will go into hyperspace. So yes. like Von Rigg's tie and the fireball. Yes, most all notable in. Everything in there is going in. Yep. There might be ex exceptions. For instance, I suspect that we would probably not have had um, and snare drop into hyperspace because we were seeing that it was doing really wacky things and we we're just like, sure. okay, maybe let's hold this off and put it in later when we better understand it. Mm -hmm. um, so uh, there will be cases on a case-by-case -case basis where something specific won't be in, but that will be communicated in advance. So you always know what's, what in the product is gonna be out of hyperspace if something isn't. Again, this is only for the new release ships, not the second edition re-releases. Mm -hmm. um, but the second edition re-releases are always a priority to get back into hyperspace soon. So if they're not in, mm -hmm. the, it is likely, it's again, not guaranteed, the next, the but it's likely they'll be in the next season. Makes sense. Sure. I, I see a question here from uh, Extel and Core that I think is interesting. Uh, are you afraid that the hyperspace format is going to get stale quickly if the number of available things is low? Well, I mean, what's quickly? That's the interesting question here, right? Hyperspace needs to be fresh for about six months. Now the pool is small mm -hmm. um, because every six months we refresh the base of the baseline of the pool. Mm -hmm. The pool is small, but Importantly, um, a lot of stuff is coming in. So like one example is some of the factions actually start very small because they're getting a bunch of releases. Hmm. Um, so some factions will start smaller and grow to be bigger and other factions will start at the size they'll stay at. Um, uh, and so, you know, like because it's a smaller pool, a new entry represents a greater proportional change. Hmm. Um, so I'm not too worried about it. As long as there are, you know, like new releases, I don't yeah. think solving the meta within six months is too big a concern. And those new releases provide like little mini updates. Yep, and little infusions exactly. of, of yeah. new upgrades and new pilots. And, you know, if we have to, emergency points changes and even emergency hyperspace availability, cha availability changes could be a possibility. It's something yeah. we'd prefer not to do. It's not this something is the we plan, would ever plan, but, but yeah, we can kind of we see We can how react to things as needed. Because mm -hmm. we definitely want it to be we want there to be a place for hyperspace, and we want it to be a meaningfully different experience than just yes, playing extended. Definitely. Like uh, your your hyperspace list will always be available to use an extended, but you know we want to give you two different feeling kind of yeah places to. Play. Well, and I, th I think an important thing to under here score here too is that sort of you know like the third leg here is epic. You know. Yep. 
that yeah. we have this, you know, like, there are a lot of ways to enjoy X-Wing. Right, and they don't all necessarily have to be for you. Yeah. Like, you, you, there is no onus that if I'm an X-Wing player, I must play and enjoy every one of these Exactly, parts. exactly. Do we want to go through some of what's in hyperspace, or for a couple of factions, or all of like? Let's hit a couple of things. So like, let's yeah. let's talk like, about like, some. I've got rebels in front of me. Yeah. So all the B wings. Yep. All your Y wings. Yep. All your A wings. Yep. X wings. It's about half and half. You don't have wedge. You don't have bigs. You don't have two tubes and the cavern angel zealot. But you have, you do have a lot of other options. Yeah. You've got Luke in there. Yeah. So that's one of the examples of we're not just going to have a blanket. This whole ship is in. Exactly. Uh, also, all of the uh, YT thirteen hundreds except for the Outer Rim Smuggler. Yeah. And that is your that's your Rebel selection. Yep. So you've got a really constrained, and some people will complain you know that the constrained choice is bad, but it also breeds interesting decisions. It does. Mm -hmm. And it, you know, it just forces you to revise your thinking. And again, this sort of, the, you know, the point of hyperspace is that it's a format that will change. And you'll be able to talk back about that one hyperspace season where, you know, it was all about this one pilot who no one had ever even liked and extended. You know, sure. we'll probably see stuff like that just because of the different relative valuations. So it's a way to breathe life into all the content. Yep. And then, uh, so Galactic Empire, kind of same deal. You've got your Tie Advanced. You've got your Tie Reapers. You've got your TIE Fighters in most cases. You don't have HAL Runner, you don't have Wampa, and you don't have Night Beast. But most of the other TIEs, and you've got the Strikers and the Decimator. But not the Patrol Leader. Uh, yeah, without the generic. So, so again, constraining and making you make some different decisions, consider things that maybe wouldn't have been played in the past. So yeah, so this is just sort of, you know, it's a, it's a new tool for us. I'm really mm -hmm. excited what we can do with it. Um, I think it's going to be really interesting. So what are we? Uh, what what else is coming up then? As we kind of wind up this stream, we've got uh, yes. some OP stuff coming up. On, yeah. On so just in the next couple of months, we've got system opens happening in both the UK and then in Chicago at Adepticon. Yep. I'll be at Adepticon. I guess Max will be mm -hmm. there too. Uh, those are going to be really nice tests of these points changes. Yeah. We've got Prime Championships. We've taken all the applications for stores. We want to host those. Uh, those dates and those stores will be getting reached out to soon. Yep. And then, you know, the 2020 store championships kicking off before too terribly long as well. Yeah. Over on the product side, uh, Wave 6 coming out in the next several weeks here. Yep. We've got Wave 7 that we just announced. Yeah. Uh, so. I am so excited for the gunship. Yeah. One of my favorite all-time Star Wars vehicles, and it looks fantastic. Have you flown fantastic. it yet? Fantastic. I have not. Ooh, well, we should get it on the table because Ooh. I am excited to uh, show you what the strafing mechanic is like. Maybe we'll nice. even get it on the table right here. Ooh. Ooh. This table, in fact. <laughs> yes. This, this very table. I think, you'll, I think you'll like the strafing mechanic. Nice. Yeah, I, excited for that kind of stuff. Uh, but yeah, that's the new ships for First Order, Galactic Republic, and Separatists. Yep. So three of the factions that are kind of lacking in terms of ship choice, getting a nice little boost there. Mm -hmm. And all getting uh, a, a ship that fills a pretty interesting different role. Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, speaking of force multipliers, I was going to say the First Order should look forward to that shuttle. Ooh. Yeah. Awesome. All right. Some so a teasers. lot of exciting things coming for X-Wing. Yeah. Lots uh, of stuff to look forward to. Board. Well, we will not leave you guys in torment any longer. I think we they will, want the files. We all, we'll, we'll <laughs> get off this stream so you guys can get your files. Uh, thank you, everyone, so much for watching. We stream every Tuesday and Thursday, so make sure you subscribe. Uh, starting this year, we're streaming only on Twitch, but all the stuff is archived afterwards on YouTube. So even if you can't catch us live, you can go over and watch it right there. Uh, so the files that you're looking for will be up immediately after this. I'm going to send the message to go, go put them up. Uh, come back on Tuesday. We're going to be playing Fallout Shelter, the Ooh. board game, a oh, new, nice. brand new I've board game. I've heard very good things. Have not played it myself. Yeah, it's sweet. It's so fun. I enjoy it a lot. Uh, follow us on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook. Thanks to Carolina Game Tables for the sweet table. We'll see you guys next time.